since you've had that kind of fresh lineup at 170 and now a matchup that I know your eye and is right there at the belt man with Leon yes. Rocky Edwards not a wrestler finally yeah. is a yeah, champion I know. <laughs> at I know 170 it. I can look at him and say that he is a he is a mixed martial artist well right you know, and, yeah. and in the down, beginning, he was car. known as a striker, right? He was known to be in a striker. Yeah. But now you've seen him evolve. He's getting better. That's a scary guy. He's that tough. is a scary opponent because there I've, I've prepared against so many other different fighters who you've seen him fight once, you've seen him fight a hundred times. They don't yep. change. Correct. No disrespect to them, but when you used to look at a, uh, Leon Edwards, the guy's gotten better. I mean, he's the only guy that has taken down Usman. And it held him down the entire round. Inside trip got to mount first round, yes. buddy. It's insane. First round. And you know that that messed with Usman yeah. mentally, emotionally, you know? And he's a big, he's a big welterweight. He's yeah. like 6'2, you know, he's a, he's got big, thick legs, big upper body. Yep. Um, great striker, good knees in the clinch. He's good everywhere. And um that's what I love about that fight, man. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. you know, that's what yeah. I love about this fight. You give me two more fights and I beat these guys. I could be right there as another uh, for another title shot. At 40 yes. years old, who could say oh, that? Right? Come on now. Come that's on now. Couture. Talk to him, Wonder Boy. Come on yes. now. That's what and we let me see. tell you, he hasn't seen, he hasn't seen or faced anybody like, like No, you know what not. I mean? Yeah, yeah buddy. Most of the guys that he's fought are wrestlers, right? He's yep. so he's prepared. Pretty much every fight the exact same way. You know these guys are going to try to shoot and take me down. Keep the fight standing. Pick them apart. Yeah, right. right. But remember the last time, the last striker he really fought, and he was beating the crap out of him. But still, you just know there's there's always a moment there. It was Nate Nate uh, Diaz. Mm, I mean, Nick, yeah. Uh, Nate, yeah, it was Nate. Nate, Nate caught yeah. him with the left hand. And Nate yeah. almost put him to sleep. Yeah, almost pointed put at him. him to sleep. Instead of trying to go and finish him, he's like, ha ha, got yeah, you. He just pointed what at him, man. Doing? I'm like, what? go get him. What? Oh man! Now nah, we want to see that uh, fight, man. We want to see yeah. that fight. Speaking of Nate Sensei, yes. do you want to want to talk segue. about like, the segues segue here? Wonder to Boy. ask ask Those your questions, are, Sensei. We gotta ask you, you know, because we we are the number one podcast in the world when it comes to influencer boxing. <laughs> talk Let's to him. Go. Let him know, baby. So we got Nate Diaz, Jake Paul confirmed ten rounds. What are your True. thoughts on that? Right, Nate Diaz is, you know, we saw Woodley make that, you know, did that fight, and now we have yeah. Nate Diaz, another legend making his way over uh to fight yeah. jake paul what are your thoughts there on jake paul in that fight okay for one i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go with what i'm gonna talk about uh nate first yep you know these guys that are facing um you know the paul brothers they aren't they aren't boxers they are not Correct. boxers they are mixed martial arts they're mma fighters moving over to a completely different sport now, not saying that Nate couldn't put him to sleep, but that's just not his style. He's not a power striker. He's a volume striker. I feel like the 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 later the fights go, maybe he has a chance, but he's facing a, a he's facing a a professional athlete now, not just a YouTuber. That's yeah. right. You know, this guy, uh, Jake Paul, is a professional athlete. You see him putting in the work. That's why I respect him so much because a lot of times you see these guys, these influencers, influencers try to go over to a, a different sport completely, and they give it a you know a half ass try. <laughs> right, and right, right, like, right. This dude is putting in all the work. Yeah. He's putting himself through punishment. You, if you look at his body, man, I mean, he's he's yeah. become he is. An I've athlete. seen it first person, Wonder Boy. I've been wow. down there in Puerto Rico with him and and watched him train. It's it's in, it's incredible. And it's been he years can throw now. hands, and I mean, here recently, I mean, he's fought Anderson Silva, he fought uh, uh, Tyson Fury, Tommy, Tommy Fury, yeah, Tommy Fury, excuse me, yep. Tommy Fury, yeah, and he looked great, man. He looked good. He knows he's smart enough to know, he's intelligent enough to know what fights are going to make him the most money, and what fights he can win. Yeah, right? he marries them too. There, there's always that if yep. factor, which is why people tune in. Yep, but Jake is going to win. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. listen, we we we've been on that same train. We think Jake's probably going to take this. It's it's yeah. going to take a Herculean effort from Nate, and the ten rounds does help him. But yeah, for sure, uh, we're on that same page. But speaking of uh, another influencer boxer, uh, well, you know that you've you've spoken to our boy Fred Talks Fighting. 
uh, yes. about uh, KSI a little bit, you know, I ask about it is let's just say <laughs> Stephen Wonderboy Thompson that a guy like KSI and a guy yes. like Jay Paul were to meet in a match. Not that we've been waiting on it for five years now, but let's just say it happened. Yeah. Obviously, you only have a little bit to go off of. What would you think happens there? I think it would be a, a I think it would be an exciting fight to be honest with you. I think it'd be very exciting just because of the two different styles clashing together, right? Yep. Jake yeah. Paul with the more fundament, fundamental boxing uh movement, hands up, head movement, and you have the KSI with the with the distance management, the karate kind of style movement hands down. But this is somebody who hasn't been doing karate his entire life. So somebody who doesn't really understand it yet. He can put it together against somebody his same caliber yeah. and his opponent not know what's going on. But when you have somebody who's been working really, really hard on the fundamentals of boxing, such as Jake Paul, I think I, I think Jake may have the edge there, mm. right? Because if you notice, when, when KSI ended up moving forward, where was his chin? Oh, yeah. He's yeah, sticking straight up. up. Yeah. With somebody who's got good counter striking or good fundamental boxing, that that could be dangerous for K, for for KSI. Yeah. All Jake has to do is sit down on his punches, which he does, and let he and does. let KSI run into a left hand or or be quiet, Siri. <laughs> Siri always messing him. You know, I know, man. I just feel like KSI could probably end up running into something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's general consensus over here at the breakdown, but. Uh, you know, stepping away from the influencer stuff for, for just one more second here, we did have we, we had this question that we wanted to ask you before we let you go today. And since and I have both thought about it, we have our own, but I want to know yours. What's the your favorite fight you've ever been in? The one fight you look back to and go, that was my career defining moment. That one right there. Okay. My favorite fights aren't necessarily the fights that I've won. Mm. The fights that I've lost. And the reason for that is you learn a lot about yourself when you're in deep water, mm. where you are, you know, people can say that they can go out there and do this and do that. Oh, I wouldn't tap or I wouldn't give up, but they've never been in a situation like that. Right. They've never been yeah. put in a situation where it's the hardest moment. You feel like you're about to die, but yet you don't stop. Right. Yeah. I've seen fighters out there at the at the top at the highest level looking for a way out yeah right especially yeah. when you're fighting somebody like khabib right <laughs> who he's talking to you he's grinding you out i've seen guys literally turn their back and pretend to defend their neck just so they could get out of there yeah but my favorite fight i would say was madison square garden ufc 205 woodley won yeah against against tyron woodley yeah that, that that's a that was a different woodley it's crazy. Than the one we're used to seeing recently. Yeah. That Woodley was a is was just a freak. I remember watching, looking at him at weigh in, you know, a weigh in, and he didn't look that big. He was like, man, this guy's tiny. Yeah. The next day, <laughs> the next day, like he ate a, a completely he ate a human being. <laughs> and he was just massive. Quads oh. on him. But that was my favorite fight because you know, we didn't win it. It was a draw, but still. One of the greatest fight cards of all time. Yeah. And the first ever at Madison Square Garden. Yep. Broke all Madison Square Garden records. Um, and I get knocked down in the fourth round three times back to back. Oh, I know. Oh. Next thing I know, I'm in the tightest guillotine. That thing, it looked like he was giving you a chiropractic adjustment. It looked Dude. like it was crazy. Normally, that's like a $75 adjustment, right? <laughs> yeah, I got it for free, bro. But... When I remember being in that guillotine, and it's funny what you say when you're in a fight. I literally was talking out loud, like I'm talking to you now. I said, <laughs> "All these people, I'm think." I said, "All these people came to watch me fight. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not tapping. I'm not going to give up. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out. Yeah. Right. But I, I held on. I, I. I remember it being choked, but I had like a little bit here, like a little <laughs> straw That's that I could breathe crazy. out of, and that was enough. That yeah, was enough. Insane. Right. Yeah. I had like a little straw piece of my neck that just wasn't <laughs> being choked, just a little bit. Right. And I could, and then I, I, as soon as I said that, I felt his arms start to get tired. Oh, uh, yeah. And I remember going back and watching the fight. You couldn't hear, you can't hear anything during the fight. You, right. you're, you're totally zoned in. Yep. 
But as soon as I pop my head out, the the arena it erupts. Went crazy. I remember that erupted. It, man, oh, it was man. I, something I've never heard before. We ended up getting fired of the night. Yep. Right. Yep. And um, just in the fact that I was in a position where most people would have given up, and I didn't. It's one of my yeah. all-time favorites, man. All-time favorites. A, I, I gotta say, it's amazing you say that because that fight for me was also my favorite and one of the like most nerve-wracking ones for me because obviously always rooting for you, but my striking coach was brought out to spar Woodley. Yeah. Yes. So, because he was with Duke Rufus and, and uh, Michael yep. Tang, my coach, had worked with Rufus. Uh, so we brought him out because uh, he's a three-time national champion in Taekwondo. He was on Team USA. He was uh, training partners with Steven Lopez. Uh, so he was brought out to like be you, right? Simulate, so, simulate. Yeah, emulate and just do some stuff. And I remember being like, I don't care. I don't care, coach, that you're working with Woodley. I'm <laughs> going for Wonder Boy. And it was one What's of those cool, like cool funny things. After that fight, you know, me and Tyron, we've had many times to hang out. And he, we were on Cobra Kai together and got to hang out. He's making a, a big shrine at like a, like a uh, special spot for UFC 205. Mm -hmm. for that fight but we came you know we came buds i guess yeah you know at first i, th I don't know if me being so nice annoyed him <laughs> but i eat him it up happens. with nicest man i don't remember if y'all remember that interview we were talking he was talking crap and i was like man why you gotta why be, you gotta so, be so mean yeah, yeah like, why you gotta be so mean kind of yep. broke character and started laughing man <laughs> Uh, but he's, he's, he's a cool cat, man. He was cool. That's awesome. That's one of the greatest fights. I mean, not just of yours. I think in UFC history, you watch it back. It's just one of those ones that you just, you remember where you were. I remember watching it in a Dave and Buster's and everybody just like that crowd in Madison square garden. When they popped, when you popped out the whole, like people out of their oh, seats, wow. the yeah, big, man. you know, beer funnels flying everywhere. <laughs> it was just oh, one of those man. moments, man. It was, it was crazy. This is in orange County, California, you know? So That's yeah. cool. you had, a, you had a lot of people rooting for you that night, but that was definitely one of my favorite ones as well. But yeah, man, listen, it's been an honor for us to have you on here. Uh, been been one of my dreams to, to have you on, and thank God I'm friends with with Faith. And Faith. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you gotta Wade, have the hook up. You guys are the best, man. I appreciate you just inviting me on. Thanks for taking on me. And we gotta do it again. A hundred percent. Well, actually, let out. me. I gotta say this. Wade has been doing this whole thing now, where he's been wanting to put himself through the ringer uh, and training. Uh, he had a, a oh. big training at a boxing gym, so I said, yeah. you know what? I know a guy. Yeah, come yeah. on, baby. Yeah, come on, Wade. He just took some collie sticks in a boxing gym. I said, uh, "What if boy uses collie sticks too? It ain't to the body, to the ribs, but he'll yes, use them to the shins." To these shins oh, right here, buddy. Yes. So I said, "We gotta, I gotta get Wonder Boy to commit to saying yes, so we can, we can make that happen. Do that in person." I'm down. Yes. You tell me when and where. I mean, y'all come down. <laughs> we will set you up. Yes, come on, Wade. Do it. Hey, well, listen. Uh, you got. I don't know if you know. I'm, I'm, I'm a Southern boy, man. I'm, I'm yeah. from the South. No way. Yeah, I'm yep. from Knoxville, man. Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. That's right, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And I got about. a bone. I got a. I don't know who your who your team is, but I got a bone to pick with you. I know you're in South Carolina. The the, the Gamecocks last year took us ah. out of the college football playoff, so we're you know saying we got some heat now. I mean, oh, you got, we got heat, some beat, baby. Come on. <laughs> nah, we'll do it, man. That would be so fun. Uh, a hundred percent, Sensei. Do you have anything else for Fulton Boy before we let him go? That was it, man. I just want to. I just appreciate it, man. It was like it was crazy because time flies. I feel like yesterday we were just training, and that was. I thought, I was like, oh my god, that was actually right before COVID. So that was three years yeah. ago. So it's insane yeah. how much time has gone by. But crazy. we definitely gotta make it happen soon in person. Get back out here, guys. We'd love to have you. We'll host you guys. We'll have a good time. Awesome. We can do. We bring your stuff. We'll do a live podcast. Yes. yes. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, listen, there he is, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Like I said, fighting July 29th, Michelle Pajeda. That one's going to be a banger and soon to get back to that title shot. Wonderboy, appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much. Anytime, guys. Y'all enjoy. Have a good one. Peace. I can't take no love.